Whisky. Masters of making a campaign much more difficult than it has to be. And I guess they have better monks and stuff. Hi, my name is Mr. Smart Donkey, and today we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of the Yasugi. As always, we will start with the Yasugi's clan traits. The Yasugi's are the masters of prayer, although I wasn't lying when I said their campaign is difficult, but more on that later. The Yasugi have four traits. Let's start with the usual unit based traits. Reduce recruitment costs and upkeep for warrior monks, and can recruit superior warrior monks are the traits we've seen over and over again. The Yusugi warrior monk units are cheaper and more skilled than their vanilla counterpart. Increased trade income gives the Yusugi more koku from trade with other clans. Lastly, plus 2% to the success chance of monk actions does exactly what it says. Their monk agents have 2% increase to their success chance. Not particularly useful, but every little bit helps. On to the campaign, where things get interesting. The Yusugi started in Chigo, a mediocre town in a terrible province. Ichigo has average soil, a port, and a merchant colony. It also starts with a Buddhist temple already built, so far so good. The town itself isn't all that bad, the problem lies in the province. You are a minimum of 3 turns away from every single neighbour you have, making expanding extremely difficult and risky. Speaking of neighbours, let's start in the north. Not technically a neighbour, but to your north on the island of Sado are the Honma, in one of the richest provinces on the map due to the gold mine, a prime target for the Yusugi. To your west are the Jimbo and Ichu the only clan you're at war with at the start of the campaign. Not a particularly interesting province, and despite them being your only enemy, there are much more interesting directions in which to expand. To your southwest in North Shinano are the Murakami, although it's fair to ignore them and say that the Takeda own it because they will without fault after a turn or two. North Shinano itself has average soil, with nothing else going for it. To your south in Kazuke are the Yamanuchi, your vassal. Kazuke has average soil and a school, a valuable building to have, but the last thing you want to do in an already difficult campaign is attack your vassal. To your southeast are the Yashina in Fukushima, which has fertile soil, a port, and wood as a trade resource. A valuable province, to be sure. Finally, to your east in Uzen are the Murakami, who shouldn't be of any concern since you only border them through a large forest, which the AI will never use. But for completion's sake, Uzen has fertile soil and a holy site. As you can already tell, the Yusuki have a lot of things to consider on the subject of early game expansion. As I mentioned before, every single neighbor is three or more turns of movement away from Ichigo, which is a big problem, but it can also work in your favor on the subject of defending your lands. You may even consider purposely not upgrading your roads for a while, as it might mean you get an extra turn to respond to incoming threats by recruiting a few more units which might change the tide of battle. As I alluded to before, you should consider ignoring the Jimbo for a while. They will attack eventually, but going west will make defending Yusugi extremely difficult as it opens up a path for the Takeda to use when they inevitably attack you. It also borders you to the Ikoiki, your religious rivals, which will inevitably also result in war. A more appealing option is going east. Fukushima is a rich province which leads into many more rich provinces. Establish a foothold there and use Ichigo as a choke point in the west for a much safer start to the campaign. Another province that should be on your early game radar is Sado. Besides being one of the richest provinces in the game, it's always a good idea to stop the Honma from expanding early on, as they can become a big nuisance later on with naval invasions. They start allied to the Atakiyama, but since the Atakiyama own Miyagi in the east, you'd likely go to war with them soon anyway. Lastly, a look at the Yusugi family tree, which is nothing if not interesting. This is the smallest family tree in the entire game, but somehow not the worst. Your daimyo is the 15 year old Yusugi Kenshin, who has two traits. Lucky gives him a minus 2% chance of being assassinated, and enjoys a drink gives all units under his command plus 1 morale. Your other general is Kenshin's 19 year old brother Masakage, who has no special traits. That concludes the entire family tree at the start of the campaign. The Ashina and Jimbo both have daughters available to marry right away. You can even get peace with the Jimbo through marriage and the offer of some military access, but I'd recommend taking the Ashina daughter instead. On to the Yusugi specific units, which are largely the same as those of the Ikoiki, but in smaller numbers. Starting with the Yusugi Warrior Monks, which for some reason are the only Naganata Warrior Monk unit in the game to have the Naganata part cut from their name. Even the Ikoiki Naganata Warrior Monks retain the Naganata part in their name. Compared to the Vanilla Counterpart, they have plus 2 melee attack, plus 1 melee defense, and plus 3 charge bonus, which are the same buffs the Ikoiki received as well. Next up are the Yusugi Naganata Warrior Monk Hero, who mysteriously were allowed to retain the Naganata portion of their name. They have received plus 2 melee attack, plus 3 melee defense, and plus 4 charge bonus as their buff. Again, the same as the Ikuiki received as well. The last unit to receive the buff is the Yusugi Bow Warrior Monk, who have received plus 1 morale, plus 5 reload skill, and plus 5 accuracy as their buffs compared to the Vanilla counterpart. Interesting to note here is that these are the same buffs that the Ikuiki variant received too, except for the plus 1 morale. Also important to note is that the Chosukabi Bow Warrior Monks are still the better archers. They too are missing out on the plus 1 morale, but their accuracy is still higher by 5 points. The final unit is the Yusugi and Ikuiki unique units, the Marathon Monk. They're somewhat similar to the Naganata Warrior Monk, but with lower numbers they lose the 1v1. 
Their redeeming factor is the second wind ability, which makes them good enough to shove one or two in an army, but they're no replacement for the Naganata Warrior Monks as a battle focus unit. Finally, it's army recommendation time. The Yusuke give a wide range of specialization, similar to the Ikuiki. Their best units are the Naganata Warrior Monks, who like to be used defensively due to their low armor, and the Bow Warrior Monks who like to be used defensively, giving them more time to deal their insane amount of damage. This means you have to make a choice on what you want to focus. The early game is standard. You want to field your usual Yari and Boashigaru army. Feel free to add in some light cavalry, but it might be difficult to find the space to build the stables in the Yusuke's early game. Upon getting to the later game, you want to start fielding Samurai and Warrior Monk armies. If you want to keep your armies offensive, you may consider recruiting some Katana Samurai as your main line, with Warrior Monks on the flanks. If your focus is defensive armies, you can go for a similar setup with a Naganata Samurai as your main line instead, as they can take more abuse from the enemy range units. You can always mix things up a little and recruit some Yari cavalry into your armies for a more flanking potential. As I said, the Yusuke have a large skill set, and thus have many strong options available to them. That is going to do it for the Yusugi clan overview. May Buddha guide your steps. If you like these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. Also let me know which clan you'd like to see you covered next. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.